Hi. Hi, my name is Jack and I am the co-owner co of uh, Anthony the Spice Maker, located in Mayflower Market and another branch in Chinatown Complex. Most of our customers are home cooks, people who like to buy gifts for home cooks. We have chefs coming here, we have um, Singaporeans with family members living in other countries like Australia, New Zealand, London. Um, this, this spice uh, trade was uh, actually started by my father. So the family used to be in the trade of um, washing shark's fin and then delivering them to restaurants for, uh, if they order from us. Lah. Okay. So this uh, trade used to be done, all this used to be done in, in the kampong. Okay, so we had to relocate. The government wanted us to move to HDB. We continued that trade in the HDB and then unfortunately we got complained by the neighbours because it was actually very, very smelly. So that was our only um, source of income but we had to give that source of income up. Not knowing what else to do, we sought help from either HDB, the HDB or the NEA. And then we spoke to the officers and then they told us that there's actually a vacancy in, in the wet market. If I, if I didn't get it wrong, right, the only, the only choice of trade that was available is the spice trade and then it is something our family had no knowledge on. My Akong, he sent um, my granny and one of my uncle to Teka, Little India, to learn from an Indian guy. Uh, my Akong paid the person so that uh, my granny and my uncle can learn the basic of um, how to, what are spices how to mix them, mix spices into spice paste, how to mix spices to cook chicken curry, to cook fish, seafood, vegetables, etc. And then we just started the business. To our surprise, the business um, attracted uh, customers from all races. And then it was from there, my dad, at the point of time, my dad was still a kid. So what will happen is you get a lot of home cooks coming to us, coming to my father, telling him that, oh boy, I want two scoops of ginger, two scoops of turmeric and a few scoops of this and that. I want to cook um, fish curry. So it is from there, my father learned how to mix spices to cook a certain dish. After I joined, uh, I joined him after I completed my national service. Firstly, I see it as, a, as my responsibility to continue this legacy. Now he's pushing all the responsibilities to me. Like if, if we have any inquiries on any uh, possible collaborations or any business inquiries or any wholesale inquiries, he will push all the inquiries to me and then I'll have to set the terms and conditions and I'll have to decide on whether we should or should not proceed with working with that party. If you want to put it in perspective, he is more of a troubleshooter. I am more of a troublemaker. I will always propose this, propose that and then he will be sitting down there telling me what if this happens, what if that happens, tell me how will you solve it. And my role is to be that very daring person that the, old, the previous two generations didn't dare to do. 
and my role is to also make sure that um, things will not turn out how it turned out the previous time, the last time. My father's business failed. And then I grew up in a broken family. My mom and my dad, they were always fighting. And then I... Uh, there was a lot of uh, emotional violence at home. And I grew up as a very, very violent kid. I got, I got into a lot of fights and a lot of fights, mainly fights. I started cooking when I was, what, 12? When I was a kid because I spent all my money on cigarettes. Yeah. So, so I, had, I had no choice but to learn how to cook when I was at that age, 12. I had to go to the kitchen, open up all the cabinets, learn how to cook instant noodles, how to cook eggs. I'm more of an art person. Like since young, I'm more inclined to doing stuff like painting. Other than fighting, I, will, I I love painting. I find it very. I find that when you are painting, right, you have that. At the instance when you are painting, when I'm painting, I find that I have the ultimate freedom to, to express myself and, I, and then I love painting, I love sketching so when reality hits you right, when you need to make a living right, then you, are, you start asking yourself like what am I good at, what I love to do, you know you have this notion nowadays telling people that oh you go with your passion so I love to, I love to paint right and I see the tattoos are very cool and you look at all the tattoo artists around, they look so super cool. I, I, I was thinking I want to be, be like one of them, okay? I want myself to be like them. You can do anything you want, you can have any, any, any hairstyle you want, any color, color hair you want. I've got my left arm covered, right arm covered. My back is empty. My front almost covered. Something naughty on my thigh. That's all. Yeah, it, it was it was actually very difficult growing up in a, in a broken family because you are. I was I was put in. I was living in almost constant fear or in a, in a constant state of uh, anxiousness. Uh, I, I was always worried of what, what's going to happen next. Because almost every night you get your parents fighting and you don't really know what's going on. You don't know what is right, what is wrong. And, and as a kid, you, you me, as a kid, I, I was very worried for I don't know what. I was just very worried. That was the main suffering I went through. Up until quite recently, I was still going through that. It's like, it's more of a... Instead of muscle memory, I think it's more of an emotional memory to me, really. Um, so I, I, during that, during that phase, right, I, I didn't had the energy to... I find that life was meaningless uh, during that point of time. I, I don't see a point for me to drag my feet to my store, open my shop and then put on a fake smile to my customers. 
getting money from them all for nothing and at the end of the day I just die off as another another human being on this planet yeah, another just another entity on this planet I become that sort of person uh, who was living in, in a constant state of uh, anxiety yeah. but I, I, I let it bother me lesser now as compared to last time I can acknowledge that now when I feel anxiety right when all these um, all these thoughts starts to flow in my mind I will acknowledge that they are there but then knowing that they are there and getting dragged into into those very uh, worrisome thoughts right is very different if you acknowledge that they are there and you know that you are just experiencing anxiety and then you can be at peace with yourself because you know that it's not real it is only only when you think that it is real you suffer mm. so i'm feeling i'm feeling so much better right now hi i'm anthony anthony the spice maker that is a uh, quite joker and I miss a lot of friends <laughs> uh, playful you know uh, right yeah but it's quite intelligent uh, in the sense <laughs> like to learn a lot of things uh. Uh, initially I started in 1986 from my parents time okay so I start to distribute to mini market supermarket uh, but it's unfortunately that it's a certain problem and end up I have to close down and uh, in 2009, I start to build this Anthony the Spice Maker and add a lower market. By the time it's just nine, about eight, eight, uh, about after the army is about 21. So about so I asked him to join me. Say I from here I'm to make it better so that you can so called take over whatever I learn. Yeah, so you can go about with make it to sell all over the world the best. That's what my intention. Yeah. Yeah, starting he wants to be a tattoo artist. But one problem is that that last time need to complain the back problem. Okay, because uh, so I asked him, okay, if you want to be a tattooist, I will support you. But you must remember his back got problem. So when you have a tattooist, you need to stay maybe five, six hours at the, at the point and you never boot. I think, do you think you can sustain or not? I asked him this word. Then he think about it, I asked him. So that's a problem. So I said, you, you come in, join me. You already in the, last time I already know my things, halfway already so called. Because since young, they're helping me something when I do my business. So you know everything, I will tell him or what I want to do, what we are intention to make sure that uh, our product is perfectly like no preservative, no MSG, whatever that because a lot outside is a lot of chemical. What they are putting, we don't know exactly. So I asked him, see, we was so called make the product better for everyone to enjoy. That's it. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's very naughty because it's very easy to get frustrated and angry. Uh, that's that's the bad point of him. Uh. Yeah, that's my thing. That's why I hope he won't when I do certain business. When you do a business, you will learn something how to be patient because we deal with customers. So you need to be very patient. You will learn from that. Uh, so now, at least quite patient now. <laughs> Fast forward to year 2014, 24th of September. I married my wife. And then slowly I, 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 I got everything put into place and then yes, I'm, a, I'm a very different person now. This, this is death in, in Sanskrit. If the translation is right. Yeah, I hope it is right. 
<laughs> so this is actually, you know, to to be very philosophical, this is something to, this is death. So it is to remind me of life, to live life to the fullest. A business doesn't have to be earning, raking in a million in revenue in a year to be successful or to be like Jack Ma, to be successful like. It doesn't have to be a certain you doesn't have to you don't have to achieve certain status for your business to, in order for you to say that you are successful but i believe that we are successful right now because the the products and the services that we are providing right is of extreme value as long as we are valuable to someone or we are providing a very valuable service or product that is success. That, to me, that is success.